Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Camera Tuesday, we're going to talk about Digital Imaging Technician or DIT. These are the people who work behind the scene in movies. So let's understand their role. So why exactly do we need DIT, Digital Imaging Technician? So reality is a modern cinema shoot, no matter uh, the budget, generally has lot of technology into it, meaning a seriously insane amount of technology that goes behind the scene. And these things are so complex, generally producers or uh, cameramen or, uh, you know, directors, they're not really that good at it. So like, can they do it? Yes, they can do it. But like, would you rely on them, trust on them? Hell no. It's one of those things. So it's like, generally, cinema is a group project. And the idea of cinema, especially in high budget, is basically you have one individual who's taking care of one thing. Meaning, if cinematographer says, bro, light. So light guy would be like, I got you back. What exactly do you need? How do you need it? That's not your problem. That's my problem. I'll take care of it. Like, what do you need? How do you need? You tell me and I'm going to arrange it. So like, there is one guy. So there has to be someone who's taking care of all the digital magic that is going around. So, what kind of tech that we are talking about? The two primary techs that must work and must be in sync, that puppy is multiple cameras and audio recorder. Nowadays, it's very unlikely that you're gonna have a single camera, very unlikely. And I'm not talking some complex rig where you have like, you know, uh, like it was used in the movie 300 where you had like, you know, one uh, running at normal speed, same uh, rig having same uh, with, you know, light splitter working uh, another high-speed camera i'm not talking about that but generally we'll have sh angle a angle b uh, you know crane shots and all that jazz so generally you will have multiple camera easily two camera easily three to four is actually you can find it many places then you have audio recorder now all of these things are baseline meaning it has to work otherwise everything else goes poof then we come to uh, the real world human aspect of it, meaning there will be multiple monitors with a different output, meaning uh, whenever you see multiple monitors around the cinema shot, those are serving different purposes. That's why there are multiple monitors, not just one. That's the primary reason for that. Each monitor is dedicated to one individual. And all the system have to work together, meaning if you have, it's no point, oh, I have eight monitors, but I cannot see what the hell my camera is shooting. What's the point? So how the heck all of these things work together, that's the job of DIT. So DIT is the guy who's like, you know, he got your back. Basically, hey, I want, uh, you know, in my video village, four screens, one showing the LUT, one showing the uh, basically raw file, uh, one showing the critical focus and all that jazz. Like, you know, I want these sort of thing. D DIT will be like, I got your back. You want these things, how it will work, that's up to me. I'll take care of that. So you take this magical hoo-ha looking thing and DIT is the guy who's running the magic on it. So he's the wizard, so to say. So there's a need, like you look at this, ask a common individual, explain this, it's like, I have no idea. So what is their role? Exactly what do they do? Well, they are the one whose primary job is make sure everything works. Like in terms of technical side of things, does everything work? So they are. So certain things that they have to make sure no matter what. First is flow of time code or gen lock. For example, if you are shooting multiple cameras in synced angle, uh, like, you know, uh, Top Gun inside the cockpit. So they had multiple cameras left, right and the center focused one. All three had to be synced. How would you sync it? Cheap syncing is using time, uh, time code. Now that's OK. That's OK. Like better than nothing, but like not really that good. Because again, if you slice it, it will not slice perfectly because all the framing timings would be a bit different. So you use gen lock. That's why every cinema grade camera that is really, really expensive generally have gen lock. Gen lock means all the camera can be synced in, uh, you know, externally, meaning you can say, hey, all cameras take a shot. All cameras take a shot. So now you're slicing, it's absolutely perfect. Meaning even if person is blinking, that blink would be synced properly. Yeah, and this can happen on three cameras, 100 cameras, whatever have you. So all these gen lock and time code things, these are complex algorithms. These are complex data signal that has to go from camera A to camera B. How it's going, wired, wireless, whatever have you. Uh, how you are doing it? Are you using a dedicated hardware or using GPS? And yes, I'm not making it up. That's the thing. GPS is very accurate. It's the easiest way you can have multiple cameras that are very far apart for some reason. You can sync them. So that's there. Then you are talking about wired or wireless transmission. For example, if you have video feeds, how the heck these things are getting the feed? Like who is responsible? Like Spielberg is not going to go there. It's like, hey, I'm going to have a SDI output and then I'm going to put it in this monitor here. He's not responsible for that. Who is responsible? DIT is the guy. So you have multiple monitors. Are they working? Who is responsible? DIT. And many times DIT themselves may have multiple monitors because they have to understand right, what is coming out of the camera, what I'm sending out to others. And if there is some calibration needs to be done or some correction have to be done or LUT has to be changed, he that's why many times DITs uh, 
basically place or cart itself may have multiple monitors. So, you know, how the heck you're going to transmit the video? You're going to use STI, Ethernet or something else. That's up to you. There are some scenarios where you have, may have optical transmission. That's up to you. The DIT is the one who's responsible for that. Selection for log of for people. For example, uh, the cinematographer may require something that shows, uh, you know, zebra on focus. They're like, bro, I need to know focus. Like, where exactly is the focus? Show me the focus. The colorist would be like, bro, uh, give me the raw LUT. I can figure it out. Like, I, or apply my LUT. Like, I'm trying to get this sort of look. Apply this and I'll see it. I'll see it. Like, many times they will do that. So those things are there. Then we come to the complex aspect. These things are easy. Complex aspect is the codex and the bit rate. Yes, in principle, ideally, you would want to shoot everything at balls to the wall. Unfortunately, most people can't afford it. And not to mention, avoiding also becomes a limitation simply because you may have one card. That's not good enough. You cannot go, you know, full codex or bit rate. You have two cards. Eh, something. You have five cards. Eh, now you are doing it. Now you have ten cards managing it becomes a hassle so it's one of those things that like codecs have to be selected precisely it's like only the amount of data that you need nothing you don't especially in commercial work especially if you have time limitation where it's like no i cannot just sit around and wait because i'm transferring 20 gigabytes of file where those time sl uh, slices are important these things become much more important in cinema of course if you have time you go yolo on it but if you don't have uh, cinema in yolo budget that becomes an issue you have to be like okay i cannot go below this point and i do want some buffer room so you go one step above but you do not go balls to the wall so you do not fry your computer so all those things, somebody has to be responsible. Something has to like, I am saying this thing has to be deployed. This is how, and this guy may require you to, uh, you know, have a back and forth with video editors, post-production guys. It's like, hey, I'm thinking of using this, uh, you know, protocol. Are you guys okay with that? There may be some test run done where it's like, I'm the camera, I'm the codex, this is the setup. I'm shooting it, just sending you, just for testing, you know, test shots and all that. And proxy creation and management. Like many times you will hear people saying, uh, if you can do video editing on like laptops and all that jazz. Yes and no. Many times when you are seeing people doing proper cinema grade editing on a laptop, what they are actually editing is proxy file. Now how proxy file uh, would be swapped, that's up to them. Some cameras, like for example, Sony cameras are very popular for that. They have proxy files, even on their cheaper camera. You can create a proxy file, edit that file. That file is 8 Mbps. Even though your main file could be like 400 Mbps, you work everything on uh, basically 8 Mbps file, super easy. Your laptop, even your tablet can be like, I got you bro. And you uh, edit, slice, do everything you need to do and then just swap the file and then send it to render overnight. On generally a big computer, a small laptop will be cooked. So who is the one responsible for that? DIT is the guy. Generally, if you see a lot of computation power, that's the reason. And not mention, it also allows them to take one feed, multiply that feed, apply different, different complexity into them, and then send it out. Or they may be like, hey, I'm getting one feed. I'm sending it to multiple monitors. Nowadays, monitors have their own lookup table. So they are like, lookup table for the cinematographer, lookup table for the camera focus puller, lookup table for director, lookup table for, uh, you know, extras. So all those things can be arranged. That's the job of DITs. Then we come to the whole thing. What they are actually doing, they are making pipeline. As simple as they go there, they dig a hole and then put a pipe there. So that's the whole point. They are the pipeline expert. So they make sure which lock profile has to be used. Who is managing that? DIT is managing it. Lit uh, for, you know, uh, video village. Basically, whenever you see a lot of people uh, focused in one area, having multiple skills, these are generally places we call, uh, you know, video village i have no idea why somebody calls it village but it is what it is and which time code system have to be used how proxies will be made and working as expected this is the critical aspect many times even when the moment you go from one camera to multiple camera things generally break no matter what you do things will always break who's the one responsible for like all of those things are working in concert as they're supposed to DIT is the guy DIT is gonna a guy who may end up showing up before any producer or director and he may run everything just to make sure that everything is working batteries are working uh, you know SDI lines are working everything is functional of course bad things could happen that but that should not be like oh i did not check it it should be like i checked it everything is fine something bad happened maybe some animal uh, you know chewed through the cable or somebody rolled a truck over the cables this has happened it's one of those things that's why you have to check it so you know you are you did everything you should something bad happened so everything that is working as expected is has to come under the dit basically uh, nowadays there is an extra layer now you may have a technician there uh, that is vfx uh, supervisor You're like why the heck you need vfx during the shoot scene nowadays we have the technology of live green screen removal and with motion tracking system you can actually encode using a game engine like unreal 5 you can have a, like a very rudimentary or even a very 
uh, you know good level of fidelity model that is running around them with occlusion data so you can truly uh, block the scene and that scene would be very precious for cinematographer cinematographer is like okay okay uh, no, no 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 this blocking will not be right so that can they can work with the let's say cg artist like bro i think can we remove this the cg artist like yeah we can do it but it will look wrong and all that so like okay okay we're gonna rearrange the camera flow path those things are very common now so who is responsible for all of this dit then we come to the the dangerous part of it meaning these are the pilots of the whole thing data wranglers nowadays because of the complexity and the increased scope of the project generally uh, dit will have uh, one individual whose sole job is data wranglers or unless you are working very very low budget scenario dit will not be responsible for data wrangling now dit should be able to do data wrangling but generally because of the complexity and the scope there is a one guy whose sole job is you take care of the data so we call them data wranglers now what is the most expensive thing in equipment basically whenever you seeing a scene generally is the shot itself not any not the actors because okay, even though they are charging a lot but you have already extracted their work and especially when you are talking about practical effects when they have like done things so rigging things and they're gonna go boom on that you cannot oops it so those things are very very serious so what is the most expensive part in the shoot that's this uh, basically vf um, basically the data that is captured in the camera because you may be like oh what if we put the vfx on it here's the, you need something to put a vfx on if you don't have that source file what the hell are you gonna do like even in avatar they had to have that camera footage they had to have all of that data yes you can put a vfx on top of yes you're gonna swap it but if you do not know what you're swapping to it does not work so that's why the most expensive thing is the data in the cards not the camera if camera breaks not a big deal lens goes boop not a big deal there are like freaking horror stories you can read on reddit or some places where it's like oh they broke this many lenses this this is common it's common but oops the data yeah that's a hazard flat out hazard and be mindful this industry is so brutal with data wranglers if you are responsible for data oops uh, you will not get a job again I'm not even joking like this is the data wranglers main priority now of course something bad could happen but it should never be you it should always be the camera malfunction it does malfunction so it could happen because of the camera but it should not be like oh I did not check the card that card was not copied and backed up and I formatted it yeah if you say that bye bye career so this is the one of the one, only thing that is what we call non-replaceable because it's the essence of everything that you did so in that card at that point in time is the most expensive thing so file must be copied on top of that you cannot just rely hey i copied the file no 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 it has to be verified generally uh, for this sort of task there is a dedicated tool ecosystem uh, which they will take the file verify it that i have copied every single uh, you know bit for bit for bit and verified it now most copy paste software does do the uh, basically porting the file you take the file you dump the file that's awesome but here's the they do not verify it and do you need to verify absolutely like oops is not acceptable oops i dropped a frame is not acceptable and you may like oh, shouldn't the camera be responsible for that camera do that's why the file after the camera is the important part that's why you have to check after camera has done its work unless camera had a very weird flaw generally file would be there so reading the file requires you verification so you have to do copy and verification and the moment you have the file taken off the basically card it has to be cloned in two places simultaneously as quickly as possible that point uh, is everything is vulnerable everything is very vulnerable in that moment everything is vulnerable dit's many times they may have a, like you know their own tent and nobody is allowed to disturb them they will have like a red marker there it's like bro i'm digesting the footage if i oops it all of your work will be go so trust me at this point in time do not disturb so they copy the file it's very vulnerable every like what is the easiest way to corrupt a file while you are copying it do anything to it basically like pull it out damage the uh, card reader save the cable everything is very dangerous at that point it's very fragile so you extract the file verify the file dump the file into two independent arrays and for the cinema industry generally they use something like this which is a raid array they cannot risk it like oh i have one hard drive they generally dump it into raid arrays even for uh, basically commercial shootings they will have like a this is a very common brand i keep forgetting that's like a orange color uh, hard drives those are verified high quality reliable drives very slow they barely works at 100 mbps but those are robust drives meaning you can put data on there and everything about that drives are built for reliability but again 
still one drive not acceptable for serious level work so they always have a raid array nowadays they have something like this express 4 m2 so where you can put four nvme ssds and then dump all the files and also has the benefit of super duper high speed so if you are dumping file from red max red max can easily dump a file at around let's say 400 to 500 mbps uh, this will be saturated unless it has like a very advanced raid it will be saturated nvme is like bro i got this direct digest it and nowadays uh, many systems like especially sony's s f x systems and not to c fast express cards those are just nvme on different packaging so they can dump um, you know file at very high speed i'm talking gbps kind of speed you need something like that so you take the file verify that you have taken the file dump that file into two places verify that you have done two clean reliable absolute dumps then only you format the card and reformatting the card is kind of a, a easiest way to tell the basically camera guys like hey card is safe to use and generally they will use tapes they will have like you know tape with the card uh, you know camera b camera c camera a camera b and again they will name it as like hey in use they will generally have a red tape on to uh, like you know electrical side of it it's done in such a way that you cannot oops it it's like oh okay tape is on this side that means it has not been digested yet and there will be green tape they will put that on a card that has been backed up verified and it has multiple clones so nothing should uh, be able to destroy the data your data should be safe at that point in time they will format the card and then it will have green tape so the camera guy can be like hey green like folder or whatever they have they will pull that stuff out they're good to go so they are responsible for that and generally because of this hassle and unique requirement there are custom software now be mindful these softwares are super duper hyper expensive because be mindful you are working with something that is millions of dollars so you can afford to pay a few thousand dollars rupees fine uh, you know stuff can it be done on free uh, maybe actually yes you can do it it's just tedious but uh, it's one of those things like if you are working with those sort of puppies like one of these mags are idiotically expensive so if you are working with this that software not that expensive so and this is one of the area you cannot mess up it's like pilot cannot mess up so same thing goes here you cannot oops it so these are what we call data wranglers the most hard job there is like nobody gets any attention to now this was on a presentation on DITs. Hopefully you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst a friend. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.